Hi guys, this is Dave from Dave's Vintage Apple Tech and look what we have here. We have a PowerBook 1400 CS 166 megahertz model and it was completely totally unplanned how I wound up with this thing so we're going to talk more about this and we'll be back in 10 seconds. So more about this PowerBook. It's a uh, one owner machine. The same person owned it for many, many years. And I got this off of eBay. And um, I've been watching um, a lot of um, videos about this particular PowerBook, especially from uh, Action Retro's website. I'll put a link in his site and I was looking at it and uh, I said hmm, these are kind of interesting so more and more I got looking at these things I said hmm maybe I ought to uh, look around on the internet and I got this one for hardly anything and this thing is in fantastic shape the cover is almost flawless there's just a couple just a couple little light scratches but I mean the hinges are great keyboard looks great trackpad looks great the floppy drive works okay. Uh, the battery doesn't really hold a charge, but we're going to address that later on. This also has a uh, conventional hard drive in it. We'll talk more about the specs here shortly. And it also has a uh, CD-ROM module. So you pull the uh, floppy drive module out and you replace it with that one. And also that ROM module, uh, it does work, but it's a little moody. And we're going to have to tinker around with that a little bit to see if we can get that working much better. But anyway, uh, this is a PowerBook 1400 CS. It's the passive matrix version. Uh, they also made it an active matrix version. That would be the 1400C. This is a 166 megahertz model, which that is the fastest. Um, they made these machines, they started out the early 1400 CS's were the 117 megahertz model and it had 12 megabytes of motherboard RAM. The minimum software on the 133 megahertz version and the 166 megahertz model was 7.6.1 and they shipped with 128k level 2 cache and the eight times CD-ROM drives. And then later, the 1400 CS's, the 166 models, included a 12 times CD-ROM drive. Now these were originally announced in October of 1996. The PowerBook 1400 was a partial answer to a number of questions about recent PowerBooks, uh, powered by the same 117 megahertz 603 processor as the 5300. The 1400 was also the first PowerBook to include an internal CD-ROM drive, 6-speed. The bay for the sleep-swappable drive could also accommodate a variety of other storage options, including MO and ZIP drives. The RAM came in stackable modules. Another PowerBook first was allowing up to 64 megabytes of RAM. The 1400 also included an internal expansion slot for video out or Ethernet cards and two PCI card slots accommodate two type PC cards or one type 3 PC card. Faster models with a small L2 cache and 8x CD-ROM drive were also released. The 1400 sadly was discontinued in early 1998. And uh, this, is a, this is a really cool machine, I must admit. I really never showed much interest in these, but I kind of got, like I said, I kind of got turned on to this machine, like I said, because of Action Retro. I've been watching a lot of his videos. He certainly have done a lot of things to it. And so anyway, uh, basically the uh, code name for this and its conception was called the Epic. The minimum operating system was 7.53. And of course, the maximum was uh, OS 9.1. And it was introduced again in October 1996, and it was terminated in early 1998. 
So the processors in these things are the 603E, and again, they offered them in 117 megahertz models, 133 megahertz models, and this one is the 166 megahertz, which was the fastest at the time. Um, all of them had the uh, integrated floating point unit, and the system bus speed on this thing is 33 megahertz. Uh, the register width it's a 32-bit machine. The data bus width is 64-bit. The address bus width is 32-bit. Um, level one cache, 16 kilobyte data, and 16 kilobyte instructions. Uh, the ROM was four megabytes, and the RAM type is very unique to it. Uh, minimum RAM speed is 70 nanoseconds and the onboard RAM is 16 megabytes which is soldered in there. Uh, there is one RAM slot the maximum RAM is 64 megabyte. It has expansion slots it has two type 2 or one type 3 PC card Ethernet slash video. And uh, the screens on these things again this one is a, a dual scan uh, passive matrix and it's 11.3 and then or they made it in an active matrix on the C models and active an active matrix is a, a little bit nicer screen obviously um, the VRAM <coughs> is supposedly upgradable on this thing it says 512 kilobytes and the maximum resolution on this thing is 16 bit 800 by 600 and uh, these usually came stock with uh, anywhere from a 750 megabyte to a 2 gigabyte uh, hard drive. Uh, it's the ATA bus system and then it has a floppy uh, 1.4 megabyte super drive on it and then the optical drive is a 6 times uh, CD-ROM. And uh, these also had uh, quite a few ports on them actually. Um, it has a serial mini DN8 has a SCSI HDI 30 output stereo 16 bit mini, audio and stereo 16 bit mini, and the speaker stereo, and the microphone is mono. And uh, Smirky's going to check it out here. And um, these things are pretty heavy. They are uh, weigh 6.7 pounds and they consume 45 watts of power. So that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of these machines here. But we'll go over this machine here in specific here. So I'll be right back. All right, so just gonna kind of show you a little bit here on it. And uh, like I said, the cosmetics is really great on this thing. Um, now the nice thing about these things too is you can actually, uh, and I get um, a manual coming for this actually. Uh, you can actually customize these covers. These literally just kind of slide off with a little effort here. And you could put like family photos on there or whatever you want to do. Um, on the back here, there's the back of it here. And if you flip this door open here, you can see there's all kinds of I.O. ports there. And uh, there's the audio, microphone, power uh, to the uh, monitor, printer, and uh, then on the side here, there's the uh, slot right there for the PCI cards. We'll close this back up. And on the front here, you can see these are the modules here. So if you flip this lever, hi, hi Snicks, how you doing there, buddy? You gonna help me too? So anyway, right now I have the ROM module in here, so when you flick this here, uh, this actually just pulls right out. It's really hard to do this one hand here, so hang on just a second here. Let me just pop this out here. Okay. Okay, so here we go. See, this pulls right out. And that's what that looks like there. It's all self-contained. And then I have the floppy ROM module that goes in here that takes its place. And this thing is like like brand new on the inside. There's not no corrosion or nothing on it. And it just literally just snaps in just like that. Battery, same thing. The battery will just pop out right here. Again, let me uh, 
do it here off camera here. And that's what the battery looks like. And I'm going to see if we can take the guts out of it and put new guts inside of it so we'll have a good battery. I'll do a little research on this and figure out. But this one is a 33 watt hour rechargeable battery, but I'll find out more information on it. It's an NIMH, and I believe it's probably a NICAD battery. So anyway, we'll stick this back in there. And this is what it looks like all back together. So we're gonna power this up here and we'll take a look at it there. And then this is all the uh, official, this is all the official stuff right here, PowerBook 1400 series. Got the model number on it, all the important stuff. Now the only thing that's wrong with the cover is like uh, some initials here. Probably belong to the school district or something it looks like. I can fix that. But I actually have another one of these coming too because um, per Action Retro, Sean there at his channel, he says the memory is almost impossible to find for these things and basically the way you find it is you get another machine and hopefully there's some in it. So this one I'm getting does have a, another module in it so we'll make this a 64-bit when we get it. But uh, And we'll probably see the cover. If the cover is better shape I'll just change the back cover on this. Okay so we started it up here and it is loading up here. Let me put this screen a little bit so you can see a little better here. Well, maybe not. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Yes, yeah, Nick. I know, buddy. Yeah, you good boy. Yes, I have. Snick here, you just jumped down there. <clears throat> and there's Smirky there, as usual. She's very helpful in her own little way. Alright, so anyway, so it's done the chattering there. So let's uh, zoom in here. And um, I think what I'm going to do actually is um, now this has a mechanical hard drive in it, but uh, I want to take, and I saw actually several people do it but what they do is they take the hard drive out and they put a CF drive in and again I've seen Action Retro do this and so I'm going to do the same thing now I've got one on order but what I'm going to do is I really want, I want to clone this system because there's there's a lot of things uh, on it here but we can look about on this uh, what's on this computer here and you can see there's a 32 megabyte of memory in it and it uh, looks like we have a 20, uh, looks like we have a 20 megabyte hard drive in here. Not massive, but uh, I think what we'll do is we'll put a 4 gigabyte CF card in it. That should be okay. But yeah, it's uh, working pretty good here. Let's go to... Let's go to the Apple uh, System Profiler here. And uh, you can see it's the uh, machine ID is 310, finder is 8.0. And installed memory is 32, virtual memory is turned off, total memory is 32 meg. And let's see. And this is running system 8 on it. But this has got all kinds of uh, things on it here. Let me, um, panel's got, it's got a lot of stuff on it here. Let me go over here and open up the hard drive here. And uh, you go to Applications folder. And you can see there's a lot, there's some 
applications in there. You got America Online, you got Acrobat. The only games you got in there is uh, Solitaire. You get telecommunications, telecom applications. You got Claris Organizer, Claris Works. Boy, I haven't seen that for a while. Uh, movie Player. And uh, yeah, so there's all kinds of stuff. But we're gonna, we'll load some games on it too. And then on the utilities here, see what we got here. If we have anything that's uh, nope. And then it's got Microsoft Office 98 on it. Oh, let's open it up and see what it looks like. What's this here? And actually, the hard drive is pretty quiet on this thing. It's not noisy at all, other than just hearing it access. Um, There we go, Mac Link. And this has a uh, some type of a telecommunication modem on it. I know there's some different uh, files, but I haven't um, haven't really looked here. It looked like there's FileMaker Pro, there's Hyper Studio. I like guess there's some good programs on there. I just have to sit down and uh, play with them here. There's a PowerBook 1400 demo. Let's take a look at that. Oh, look at that. Eesh. I will get out of that. It's pretty loud, huh? It's got pretty good, pretty good uh, volume on it. Uh, we'll go ahead and click that. Okay, we'll get out of that there. Okay. All right, so we'll get out of this here. And we'll go ahead and shut it down here. Okay, and it turns off really quick. So anyway, yeah, so what we're gonna do, like I said, I've got another one of these ordered it's just for parts. It's got screen issues, so I know the motherboard's okay, most likely. Um, case looks pretty good on it, um, but like I said, I want it because it'll make good spare parts. It doesn't have a ROM module. It does have a floppy drive module, and uh, I'll show you what the floppy drive module looks like here. So this is the uh, super floppy drive module here. It does work. Um, and like I said, these are just really neat. These things are so modular. I'm very impressed a machine of this age. And uh, it's, like it's pretty easy to work on too, actually. And so that's the floppy drive. It also came with the disk. I have no idea what's on it. I haven't 
open it up yet, but we'll find out uh, what's on it. I have tons of floppy disks too, so that's not a problem. I have brand new ones. But yeah, so pretty neat. And it's got the connectors on the back of it there. So yeah, so that came with it too. So like I said, it's a really, it's a really good deal. I won't tell you what I paid for it, but it wasn't very much at all. And uh, it was a great, great, great find. And I, like I said, I'm, I'm really digging this. I really like this uh, 1400. It's pretty cool. Um, but like I said, it's very, 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 when you close it, it's very firm. It's not wimpy. Um, plastics are all good on it. Um, it's a nice machine. The rubber feet are still on it. So what we're going to do, like I said, what we're going to do on this here is we are going to do an upgrade on it. So what we're going to do is when I get that other machine, um, I'm going to expand the memory on it. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put that little CF drive in it, a little solid state drive in it. And it should make it run a lot faster, even though it's still in an IDE. It's just there's no mechanical. It's all fast as it can handle it it'll whatever it'll just literally saturate the bus on it but that's fine so you get all the speed out of it mechanical drive you don't get all the speed out of it and so this will be a really neat little uh, gadget when it's all done okay guys so anyway like this video please give me a thumbs up if you like it also hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon that you'll get updates on future videos. So anyway guys, have a great weekend and I'll see you in the next videos. Bye.